Joe Cap, a winner all his life, went out a winner once again. Stanford would prove too much for Bruce Snyder's Golden Bears in 1987. Their offensive show was highlighted by a record-setting 82-yard touchdown pass from Brian Johnson to Walter Batson to seal a 31-7 Cardinal victory. The Bears were optimistic going into the 91st renewal of their college football classic. Second-year coach Bruce Snyder brought his 5-5 team into the big game determined to end up with a winning season. California was confident they could live up to their coach's expectations. Unfortunately, nobody had told that to Stanford. A strong Cardinal defense and the leg of John Hopkins combined with the longest kickoff return in big game history to give Stanford a 19-12 big game lead going into the fourth quarter. Led by talented quarterback Troy Taylor, the confident Golden Bears tied the game at 19 apiece. Troy Taylor had the confidence that um, a senior would have his freshman year. And that's what you need to play quarterback. You need that confidence. And the reason he had that confidence was because he knew the game. He went out there and he, uh, he made a lot of stuff happen. Gaining possession of the ball with only three and a half minutes left in the game, Troy Taylor once again moved California down the field, sure that Robbie Keane's golden toe would give them another big game victory. Robbie Keane set up for the chip shot. Everything seemed right. The snap, the kick. But at the last moment, Stanford defensive back, Twan Van Lee, reached high into the air to block the kick and give the Cardinal an upset 19-19 tie. The big game had done it again, this time in favor of underdog Stanford over the disappointed California Golden Bears. For the first time in Pac-10 history, Cal had two running backs who had gained over 1,000 yards each in a single season. As a result, the 1990 big game was predicted to be Cal's Russell White and Anthony Wallace versus Stanford's Glenn Milburn, and that's exactly what it turned out to be. White, the Bears' talented sophomore, ran for 177 yards, while Milburn baffled a Cal defense with 196 yards on the ground, along with 379 all-purpose yards. If nothing else, the game wasn't boring. The 1990 game was such a memorable one for a lot of reasons. For one thing, you know, you had two great running backs, Russell White and Glenn Melbourne, on the field at the same time. And I don't know that that's ever happened, certainly not in my memory, in the big game. Two teams that were very evenly matched and a game that had some seesaw effects. Uh, came down to a couple plays. Uh, our team was extremely excited. Cal was extremely excited. I think it was one that some people have said maybe was the, the best big game ever played. Uh, I don't think it was necessarily the two best teams that ever played, obviously, but in some ways in regards to the dramatics of the game and the, and the twist uh, and the peaks and valleys uh, of both teams emotionally, it might have been one of the best. With only 12 seconds left, a Stanford score narrowed the Cal margin to one point, 25-24. A two-point conversion attempt failed, though, as Cal defensive back John Hardy intercepted Columbus. The fans went crazy. Another Cal big game victory. But they had forgotten there were still 12 seconds left on the clock. After a successful onside kick, the Cardinal were 32 yards away from the goal line and poised for another classic big game finish. Stanford kicker John Hopkins confidently walked down the field and kicked a 39-yard field goal to give the Cardinal an unbelievable 27-25 big game victory. And my son, who saw his first big game in 1982, and got unrealistic expectations for what would happen uh, was there. And I, I said to Scott, said, boy, that was really a great game. And he said, Dad, it stunk. He said, we lost. Stunned Bear fans knew that once and for all, Stanford had finally gotten their revenge, at least for the time being. But for both teams, there's always next year. Because if there's one thing we know about the big game, it is that there will always be a next year. Amazing, sensational, dramatic, heart-rendering, exciting, thrilling. These words seem to say it all. From the very beginnings of this classic rivalry, the big game has never failed to live up to its name. It's lasted almost a century, not only because it's a time-honored gridiron tradition, 
but most important because the big game is what college football is really all about. The competition, the spirit, the memories, the traditions. Those are the things that have made the big game truly the big game.